Off the rip, are you a rip or nor a wave? Do you break the rules with purpose or do you just misbehave? Is it phase or forever? I guess so. Open my plan, what is going on? We are uh, Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th. Yeah, we kill him, kill him. Up in it. Oh, you told me about the light and I forgot it. Oh, see. Episode yeah. number 39. 39, 39. Whoa, that's wild, man. Every time I think about the new one we're doing, it's like, man, it's, it's not that high of a number, but I don't know that. We started on September the 10th. So we're okay, so we're almost, yeah. we're a few months shy of a year. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. So uh, there's always been a, a what's the word? Uh, fuck. You know, with surrounded uh Friday the 13th, uh, superstition. Oh, yeah, you know definite I mean? superstition. Do you ever believe in any of those kind of things? Um, growing up, for sure, you know, the, it, it, it was something in my shit head. Shit was going to go bad. Is you know, I um, uh, yeah, or, yeah, shit was going to go bad, you know, no good thing comes of it, all kinds of whatever, whatever, right? Like, uh, there's bad things lurking in the dark, all that stuff, you know, growing up, being that I didn't know no better, I, I, I let it play with my mind for sure. You know, but now that I know better, it's just, I, I, you know, not to say that today was a bad day, but there was shit that was, like, culminating, that was trying to fucking wreck my day, right? Like, trying to do, um, uh, whatever it is that people say, but, you know, like, uh, any little, with willpower, mind control, right. you, you persevere through it, right? So are you one of those, like, you break a mirror and you believe the whole seven years is going to happen? No, no. Yeah. So you're pretty much done with shooting, like, Black Cat, all that shit, you know that? Um, so yeah. you have handpick shit you believe in? Not, yeah, 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 I might, I might, I might give some truth what, to what something. What is what you believe? Um, karma, you know. Eh, it's not a superstition. <laughs> you don't man, think you know? so? That's just life. That's just life, that's every day. Yeah, cause I believe Well, uh, so that's why I think, you know, like, well, I guess you're right. I guess it could be seen as a superstition. You know, because uh, people perceive... It's a, it's a mind thing. You know what I mean? It's uh, where you take it is where you go with it, so on and so forth. The, um, I look at it and I hold it in some respect, but I don't I don't let it determine my, my end-all, be-all of the day, if you will. So, no doubt, I might think that there's some truth to black cats and all that, you know, and who knows what. And to some people, it holds more foreboding than what it would to me, right? So, um, I'm, you know, like, I, I understand it, but I don't let it, you know, like, my, my father owns a black cat. It might not be entirely black because it has, a, like, one or two flecks. And not even like dots, but just the, the hair itself, like the little. Put it across your past and said you're not freaking out. No, or I, stepping I, on a crack. Yeah, 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 none of that. Um, you know, all the different ones. Uh, the number thirteen, like we're, you know, the Friday the thirteenth. I, I, I give it respect in the sense that it, it couldn't have gotten this far if it didn't hold some weight. <laughs> it's like you know, like myths and all those things that people talk about, and I, I give them all some weight that. Um, it wouldn't have gotten to this point in time where me and myself am still interpreting it if it didn't hold some, if you will, like uh, weight or um, retrospect to people's lives. Right. You know what I mean? If it didn't uh, play with whatever the day to days are of someone like Friday the 13th, I, it's obviously messed with enough people. Right. That it continues I to say... I wonder if it was before the movies or if the movies is what made it. No, it was way before the movies. Yeah. I want to say this one goes back let's to... Look, let's look that shit up. Yeah, if if I could say, just before we bring it up, I'm, I'm thinking that they tried to say the date goes back to when the people who fought for the Holy Grail, the Knights Templar, got... Those motherfuckers are in everything. Right? So... Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm trying to cut back on my cussing. I'm sorry. I apologize to anybody who watches and gets offended. I'm trying. <laughs> See, so yeah, this is what they say. Read it out, Jay. Is that in the novel, an unscrupulous broker takes advantage of the superstition to create a Wall Street panic on Friday the 13th. A suggested origin of the superstition, Friday the 13th, October 1307. That's a the long date, time ago. Yeah, a long, long time ago. The date Philip IV of France arrested hundreds of the Knights Templar 
may not have been formulated until the 20th century. So you're right, Knight Templar were in there. So that's, that's the mythology behind that it goes all the way back then. But these guys say that it might not have been till our present day and maybe the media in Hollywood making it big. Okay, so for uh, if it went back to the year 1307, then it would be because of the Prince Philip IV of France arrested hundreds of Templars. So that would be yeah. the, that'd be the origin of it, which is weird. Really that weird. That would be the origin of, of but, uh, superstitions. But they there's a lot of there's so they say the handshake one of our, our most recognized, you know, symbols of just like truth and honor and like put it on a handshake goes back to even like this type of mythical type of people, uh, secret societies and so on and so forth that they, they, it's weird how they envelop themselves in our day to day, you know. You think there is a, you know, people were talking about the whole uh, Trump announcing the Space Force, wanting to do the Space Force. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are thinking, there must be, you know, that whole movie about National Treasure, how there's all these, oh, all these, yeah, all these yeah, secrets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They play, know, they, yeah, they you do. Know, once you become the president, you get you get filled in on all these secrets. The and, book, right, you yeah, get to yeah. see the book. So people are thinking, well, maybe that shit is real to a certain extent. Maybe, maybe Trump found out about all these alien like Roswell, yeah. all these type of shit that they keep uncovered, and maybe Trump figured got, got to see it. I was like, "Fuck, we better get on a space force. We better get yeah. on it." So maybe that maybe it, there's there, there very well might be some truth to that too. Um, I don't doubt that there's a certain amount of knowledge that you know it's uh, on it's a smart. need to, on a need to know basis, right? And that that person who gains the presidency becomes that need to know basis depending on whatever people are wanting you to know it right I, i'm sure there's still even some stuff that is held back from that guy whoever it may man, be man i wish i could know i wish i could know some everything secrets, you yeah. wish you could know everything and everything i don't know there's so much like i think about there's I so much my own apocalypse yeah the lift the veil just for all you who missed that the, the word apocalypse apparently in latin means to lift the veil yeah, I'm. I, I've been trying to break it down, and I just I don't know. I don't know how it breaks down to. The, It'd be crazy, man. I, I'd like to know some of them secrets. No, oh. they're, they're, definitely. There, there again, it becomes like that, Ken, the Kennedy situation. You know, was he yeah. really? Was it an inside job? Was it just fucking a crazy? Was guy? it just homie on the streets? Yeah, you know. <laughs> what was the deal? Dead in his ass. Or? And obviously, like the Roswell thing, the aliens yeah. really exist. Is there any kind of kind of Bigfoot? Yeah. Uh, all, the all those, things, all those, like, yeah, is the truth out there? Hoffa, like nobody oh, ever knows what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. One. And for some of you younger listeners, because I've seen that there's a bunch of younger guys that are starting to don't know uh, the subscribe Hoffa. to the podcast, yeah. and you may now know about the story of Jimmy Hoffa, which he led uh, a bunch of people into the uh, Teamsters Union. Yeah. yeah, which I'm not really for sure what the whole thing. Would they, be. It, it's not big in the Berg, in you know what I mean. We don't see it so much here, because we have. Yeah, I want to say we have fairly decent folks. You know what I mean? The, the pay grade mm -hmm. is interpreted by how well you perform and so on and so forth. But in the bigger cities, these unions, they, they garner a lot of power because there's such a huge workforce that... So there was a workforce that wasn't getting paid and Jimmy Hoffa helped rally the troops to make it to he was he was the leader of their... He was like he, the he leader wanted, of the he, union. He wanted more pay yeah. for them, right? He wanted... He, he, so... He wanted all kinds of stuff for them, you know, like, okay. he, he, he's, but since he could, since he controlled them, he could pretty much say, uh, we work or we don't. Right. And that was, so that, then, that was a thousand, maybe two thousand, maybe ten thousand people. I don't know how wow. big it was. So he could literally say, we're not working. And those ten thousand people might not work, right? And the whole city shut down. And so he held a lot of power. And, and, and I don't know if he got... If he died for asking for more wages for his but crew, see, that's what I was getting at. Or so if, he had so much power that somebody didn't like it and off them because he yeah, disappeared. That's nobody, that's that's the that's the conspiracy. Yeah, nobody's ever found yeah. the guy. They, they they I remember Geraldo did a little episode where looking for him. You're looking for him. I think it was. It, it, you Underneath think, one of the baseball stadiums. Yeah, you know? I remember that. I was thinking the same thing, but I was yeah. thinking it was a football field or something. Uh, yeah. yeah. They look for them everywhere, man. They've every like whatever little contract job that was going to tear up all kinds of concrete or do some type of uncovering work in the cities. They said, "Oh, we're going to turn." Corona always did some shit. Yeah. He was they, in the fucking uh, 
I remember looking for Al Capone's vault. He was in. Yeah, he did that. He did the. I think I think I think they thought that Hoffa was gonna be in Al Capone's vault too. (laughs) They think he's everywhere, man. Like. Yeah, yeah, I would just like to know. I'd like to know if there really is a book of, uh, or just all the classified shit that you. Can, yeah, as all a that. president, you get to get to. Oh, he see. might. The presidency might not know the Hoffa story. Right. You know that that's that's one of those underworld type. Well, he, the, you know, the, for all we know, he could know because they could have had the you know the dude off. Right. Who knows who do? I don't know. Yeah. So that, much that's one of those stories that is just like, yeah, that would be G to know. Right. With all the dumb shit we do, you know, like <laughs> two plus two. Funny story, you want to hear, uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they said at one point, I think it was Ronald Reagan, and during his presidency, he, uh, man, I really wish I could be more. He said that he was hoping aliens was going to come down. Reagan one time had said that, and he's like. Well, it was a whole conspiracy about if we've been to the moon or not. And so uh, anyway, so he gave... Uh, another president of another country. I wish I could remember what country it was, but he had he gave a moon rock to this country, uh, and the country was so stoked on yeah, it. Yeah, and just happy, and it was a big national treasure for them, for their country, to have this moon rock. And then uh, you know, so and so many years go by, and they end up fucking testing it, and it was not a moon rock. <laughs> so that was pretty shit. Lamo. Yeah, that shit you don't hear about. But so I just wonder because you hear about the conspiracy yeah. of the moon landing, so Trump would get to know if that moon landing. If we actually not. went, yeah. I, oh man, that's one of those that you want to give the benefit of the doubt. That we and, did. and you know what? I think that's one of those um, troubles that humans find themselves in. You know, we, for all intensive purposes. But besides what the Bible wants to tell you, right? Like, oh, we're full of sin. We're born with all this sin. Like, I don't think so. We're 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 full of wonder. We want to know, right? And we take things kind of for what they are. Not everyone, but you know, we kind of and so that that being like I said, you just give the benefit of the doubt, and that kind of that kind of screws us. Because I think that's what ninety percent of the population wants to do is just well, just give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, that sounds that sounds something. Uh, not impossible. So, you know, yeah, the moon landing, fucking true, right? Like, and that's where I'm at is like, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But then I think about it like so deep. I'm like, Man, that's how they fuck you is because you give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, what makes it what makes it something? The question is, it was happening during the time where it wasn't just us. Like, oh, how can we get to the moon and take our time and think about it and and, and really get there? What makes me question if we did or not? Kind of is the fact that we were trying to beat Russia there. So, yeah. so see, maybe, you know, maybe we could have lied about it and said, "Yeah, we made it when we really didn't." You but know, then the fact, could say we the beat fact Russia. that Russia was our competition, I think they'd announced that these guys didn't make it. Right? Like, what are you talking? <laughs> unless, unless that's how you know. Then it goes deeper into the conspiracy that it's at the top. Like these countries, they say they're divided, but they have their own like big world agenda. So it just compounds if you break it down more. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm almost. I'm, I'm pretty sure we did. We at least can get the space. I, yeah. Right? We at least had some yeah. space. I well, I would say so. I mean, you see the planes up there. I've flown. I don't know. I've I've never. The only time I did carry an altimeter was when I jumped out of the plane, and we didn't go very high, right? You know. What you, was it? Do you remember? It was a little over a mile, like five thousand plus feet or oh, something okay, so like that. Um. Uh, shit. Yeah, man, people, and when you're in a jumbo jet, you're, what, you're like 30,000? They're up there, dude. They're up there. So how long when, did you fall? Do you remember how long you fell for at, at 5,000 feet? Um, free fall, I only had maybe like, a, it's really quick. Oh, really? They don't let you go for like a minute? Or I want you think you're like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like just free falling. Yeah, <laughs> totally, right? You think you just, uh, like it. No, you get the, I want to say it was max a minute. It was, It felt like a split second, but yeah. I wonder. Did they? Do you remember how fast they tell you you're falling? Fast. I don't remember. Like it was. I, I did it so long 20 ago. Twenty feet but per second, or maybe fast. Hundreds of feet per second. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hundreds fast. of feet per second. Damn. And then, uh, so you, right? They have you free falling, and homies tell you to pull the cord. So I'm over here ripping it, and then. At that point, you're cruising, right? You got the thing out, and you fall. If, depending on where you pull it, 
you fought for a long time. Like Leo almost pulled his immediately. Right? So he was there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, he was he was just <laughs> cruising around like we everybody just waiting and shit. It was hilarious. They had it timed out where if you if you followed their lead because you had two guys right like feeding you feeding you instructions with all their hand signals and all that. And if you followed their lead, you're supposed to have like I said about a minute or so worth the free fall. But they're entertaining you the whole time. They're telling you to do this. Make like, sure to watch your shit. Yeah, yeah, watch, look at your altimeter, like, all this stuff, right? And they're recording you, right? Yeah, and they're recording you. So, you, you get to see a little bit of it, but you don't, you're not, like, just intense free fall, like, whoa. Looking like at the, the, like the movie. Yeah. yeah, you can totally look down. Like, yeah, I, I hesitated. I was on the edge of the plane because they, at least the one I went on, um, you see in the movies they just like lunge out and yeah. roll out right, right. now this one had kind of like a catwalk that you could edge out with your fucking hands and paws and all that and crawl out there and ah. yeah one guy one guy goes out first so he's on this side of you and the other guy's waiting at the door for you to let go and I'm like bro you don't even want to let go it's instinct I'm scared of heights yeah, yeah it's instincts to like what so you let go and they jump off with, with you. you have another dude with you right on your back no i didn't so oh, you, you didn't do tandem I, I didn't do tandem i pay well yeah. i didn't pay shout out to marcy dude big ups i thought you had to go with another person now, you typically do but i well she i took the course marcy marcy like i said fucking sponsored it and made in the course that you didn't have to have somebody on your back yeah exactly and it's like eight hours we showed up in the morning. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We showed up in the morning. That's we, half of why I don't go skydiving, so I don't have some guy humping my ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, you can take the course, and it's it's G as can be. The people there that are real. I wish I remember the outfit. They were super legit. Um, there was the whole range of guys that were like, you know, the lady who ran it was kind of, you know, like stern but super nice, right? Like your typical mom should be, like, you know, on the line, fucking telling you what to do, but not real mean, like... And then uh, they had the real nice folks that were just, hey, can, let me get this for you, let me get that. And then there was the hard ass in the back that was like, <clears throat> nobody talked to. Even you see... All the cliche characters. Yeah, all the cliche characters, right? Really, really nice crew. And, man, I got nothing but good things to say. Like I said, the course was G as could be. Eight hours, and I didn't have someone humping me in the back. Dude, I got to tell you about this badass fucking Navy SEAL story that he talks about night jumping but it was during, I bet that's it was a, it, I'll give you the story it's pretty cool um, I told the guys at work so I got a little bit of practice telling it because <laughs> it's such an incredible fucking story but it was during the Afghanistan uh, war um, and these particular Navy SEALs there was a group of five of them and they had to take um, an interpreter in there with them but this particular interpreter you're, you're thinking well if the, if the military is going to take a guy in there with their soldiers he's going to be a legit some type of a soldier there. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'd be, like he, a seasoned, seasoned someone. You know what I mean? Um, and a military he, interpreter. Yeah, yeah, think, yeah. And, and that's who sure. Said, well, that's not the case. It was literally a fucking shepherd, a fucking guy working in the field that they just happened to be like, hey, come here and we'll pay you this much. And he was like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, and sure. No, no fucking, no training whatsoever. And on top of that, the guy that was the Navy SEAL that was. Uh, Taking him was maybe a regular size height of a man, but you know, five ten, whatever. And this shepherd was like six four, six something, you know. So he's a big old dude, yeah. like he's holding him like this. And so he drew the small straw that ha that he had to do the tandem jump with him. So you know, they're they're way the fuck up there. It's a night jump, so they gotta jump from way the fuck up there so that they can sneak in and land because they gotta gotta if they gotta get into the hostile territory with this interpreter and and, and extract uh, some people out of there. Um, so they're doing it all at night time. Well, this this untrained gentleman, they get up there and they're getting ready to fucking jump. You know, they're getting all their packs on and this guy starts to fucking really figure out that what's going on. He's he, like, what? Yeah, and he gets extremely nervous. Well, he's testing the patience of the Navy SEAL that has to jump with him because this gentleman is just starts really, really starting to figure out what's going on. And he's like... You know, they're getting closer to the door, and he's trying to, like, reach for shit, you know? And I was guy, wondering if he was, you know, informed as to the logistics of it. Yeah, you know? I, who knows, man. Uh, but he's reaching for everything to not want to jump, you know? And he's, uh, like I said, just wearing the, the patience of the, of the Navy SEAL guy. And they're, they're taking his hands off with shit he's grabbing, and they're getting closer to the door finally. And then they finally get closer to the door, 
You get the uh, red light. Yeah, and the guy fucking uh, the green grabbing light. stuff, you know, and grabbing stuff. And finally, they, they have to, like, force the guy out, you know what I mean? Damn. And so they jump between out. A, between, like, a group of them? They have to, like, or is it just him? He's fighting them to the front. Well, he was the last, so it's just him. Oh, him, man, that's even know, worse. Yeah, because he's the last yeah. one. Uh, and so they're and they're so high up that they're wearing these, these air masks, you know, and they ain't just jumping plane they're, they're running these like covered masks it covers the whole yeah place. oxygen mask yeah um well they finally get to jumping and as they're jumping this guy puke the the <sighs> the interpreter pukes man and he's getting it all over the the navy seal guy because he's right behind him and it's in his mask uh but there's it's leaking out and it's getting into the face of the navy seal guy you know and and uh as this is going on he starts puking Fuck the, the guy starts freaking out like uh they they they're they're falling for a while and they finally pull the thing and the guy the interpreter's freaking out because they're they're just trying to be calm yeah because they're trying yeah. he's trying to get his bearings and that's out what you got to do you know but the guy's freaking out freaking out so bad uh, getting to the point to where he's making them uh, he's he's really compensating the livelihood of the both of them because he's just freaking out so bad reaching for stuff tangling up wires and so the Navy SEAL says he has to start hitting them to try to knock him out because it's getting to the point where the guy's just not calming yeah. down. He can't, they don't speak the same language. So he knocks the guy out, unconscious. <sighs> and he's like, and he finally gets to get his bearings of where they're at, you know, and the guy slowly starts to wake up, you know, and uh, and as he's waking up, he hears more, oh, man. Puking, and they're sharing the same air tank. So, the, so that vomit smell is starting to leak into the Navy SEALs tank, you know, so they're, He's smelling it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, which is some of the worst. The, so the as, smell as really the, gets as you. the uh, interpreter guy comes back, comes to again, uh, same thing. Starts freaking out again. Starts making him get all twisted up to where the, the Navy SEAL can't calculate the landing or where the ground is. He's like, and we're getting close to the ground. Um, he goes, so I have to knock him out again. I have to figure out some way to, to keep him contained to where I can land us safe you know what i mean <laughs> he goes he goes and i'm going to be honest about this next part of the story he's like i probably sh i lost my cool so this is where this comes from so bear with me uh <laughs> so he knocks the guy out he, he he says uh on the map that they know they're going to be in this type of a creek 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 area dry creek bed um so that he starts to figure out that they're where they're going to be landing and he goes and we're coming in hard we're coming in fast it's nice because he hadn't had the chance to yeah he says if sort he could, it all out and yeah he says there's gonna, a lot to that dude you know he said he said there was a term for it too that you call feathering it, it i think i remember either way he said that's our, they, that's what they kept telling us was you know like feathering it or whatever right I think is what well this is what he says he goes i'm coming in too fast and to be quite honest i'm not too worried about it because i got a barrier between me and the ground. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, so I got a cushion. He goes, and he, because he goes, and I was mad at this guy. He yeah. goes, I, he was, he was really compensating the whole mission, uh, everything that was going wrong, where I could have lost my life. It's all because of this guy not being c calm and collective. He goes, and and you got to understand, I'm around guys. That that's what we do. We're calm and collective. Yeah, that was one of the like main things they pushed. He goes, yeah, so he's like, so I didn't have the patience. He goes, anymore we're in wartime. He goes, yeah, all these factors. He goes, now, so what I'm about to tell you is maybe not the coolest thing for me to do he goes but i did it he goes so we're about to hit the ground and we're coming in way too fast he's, he's like it had to be every bit of 30 miles an hour we're coming in too fast about to hit the ground so he goes he goes i knew that when we hit the ground that guy's head is going to sling up and hit me he goes so what i did is i put my hands on top of his head and i put my chin on top of his head and we hit the ground and i rode that mother and i put my feet up you know he's like he put he goes and i rode that motherfucker for about 50 yards Dude. Just on top of that dude was just laid out, knocked just out. Just dragging. And he goes, and I just fucking put my hands on top of his head, and I just rode that motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, he, and that was the story. He goes, everything worked out fine. Yeah. Yeah, they, they got, the interpreter was okay, surprisingly, for riding that shit like that. <laughs> for getting knocked out two times. Yeah, and then rode And him then again. rode across the <laughs> desert, like, what well, you said, a riverbed? Yeah, it was a, yeah, um. So that's pretty hardcore yeah and this guy is uh, his name is andy stump is his name if y'all want to see that interview uh i think it's the it's one of the fighter and the kid podcast and it's uh, andy stump you got to check out that it's yeah. it's crazy yeah well, my, my his story is going to be better because it's obviously yeah, he's got for, more yeah, yeah. Much, and know? his and it's his yeah I mean, his story and what absolutely. exactly went down intense yeah but no, my experience was way better you know, way better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I pull the cord, you know, and then it's all on me because you, you lose the guys, right? They do their own thing. And you get the homegirl, like the lady I was telling you about in your ear right here. She has a little 
walkie-talkie and you're just kind of cruising around and by that time you get it all you can scope and see for fucking ever you know and badass panoramas and this was in Texas right yeah 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 just the other side of 35 I think it was like Lexington right around there um uh, so yeah you just all you fucking like you're like five miles up there so you see amazing it view huh? amazing view this is a pretty neat view I saw this the other day and I shared this this is a flight from Phoenix to LA uh, check out the view here during 4th of July wow that's killer I've just never seen anything like that that's just so Look at that. When you fly over cities like that, it, it is, dude. Look at all those fireworks during the 4th of July. And you could probably pick out the little neighborhoods where the pockets that are going on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is. That's super that's bad. bad. That's, a, that's a real good image. Yeah, so that's pretty neat. Um, I just want to send a shout out to Alfredo De La Garza. I forgot this uh, This is a gentleman oh, I ran Alfredo. into. I ran into before the podcast, and he said he, he watched it, and that's how it was going. So I just wanted to send yeah. a shout-out to that gentleman. Oh, yeah. Always yeah. always good to get the inquiries yeah. and the people that are, you know that around your town right. are scoping it and, and into it. Yeah, and as yeah. well as the, the guy, the people in town, I was, as I was telling Johnny, there's a lot of newer uh, listeners who have been subscribing. This, I think, what I tell you, in the past two days, it was like 20 or 20 so. 20 or so, yeah. And so all, to all you new listeners, how's it going, man? Appreciate it. What up, all. what up? Glad yeah. to see you. Anytime you're bored, just tune in to us, and we'll keep yeah. you entertained for an hour or so. Do the best we can. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you something to do for while you're on your downtime BS. or whatever it may be. Listen to some BS. Yeah, we're willing to say the things you probably ain't willing to say to <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. We just ain't got no shame. No, well, you know, I don't think we're... A lot of people are embarrassed to do things. Yeah, for I sure. it comes down to. Yeah, that, that, that's the truth. One, uh, one thing that is... Uh, people are not embarrassed to do right now and I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in social media but uh, as I've said many times is uh, I keep my ear to the ground when it comes to social media but one of the things that are people are, are kind of dropping their guard down and, uh, and, and not really caring about being embarrassed or whatever it may be is uh, there's a lot of law enforcement uh, officers doing lip sync battles have you, have you no, seen that? No, I, I hadn't caught it's that one. It's something that just started and here I'll play a little clip for it. So uh, just lip syncing. Yeah, they, it's just a challenge amongst each other, and it's gotten huge. See, this is the Texas uh, <laughs> San Antonio. <laughs> they do it. That's funny shit. Look at him. So yeah, it's just a oh, lip sync. Oh, fucking attitude. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's, see, so it's all these people. San Antonio again. Tahano too. Yeah. I like it. But it's this got, is, it, it's gotten huge. This is what they need, dude. This right. is entirely what the police, law enforcement needs, dude. And I'm telling you, it goes bigger. Like, these, like, these are just two San Antonio guys. You know, I think like you know how I've said that they carry this air of superiority, cause they, you know what I mean. Like that to me, totally shows just some straight up humanness right like just being see and you saw just a rough version of dudes sitting in their car with them yeah now as it's gotten it's gotten more steam to it they're getting more creative with it oh. so like I said you just it went from just someone sitting in their patrol car to like <laughs> Good shit, dude. Right? Uh, so that's a version. Homie's mustache is raging, dude. Oh, that is nice. That is yeah. that is Peter Pornstar all over. Now I'm going to play one more just to give you a good idea of the roundness version that, and the creativeness that people are getting. See, I mean, they're having fun with it, you know? Yeah. Like I said, this is what they need, dude. It... it, it but I mean, there are so many versions, dude. Hell yeah, dude. I'm not familiar with some of these songs, though. There's so a, Bruno, this is Bruno Mars. Oh, okay. There was uh, three ladies. Three Laredo cops, too. Let them know. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got yeah. to look. <laughs> so, yeah, these are legit cops, you know? Dude, this is great. Can I fire them in there? Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> fucking Satella is tearing it down, dude. So yeah, it's fun, man. It's it's cool. It's like I said, it's just filling. Oh, hey, look, here's another one. We'll do one more. I said I was. Yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. They're, they're just they're, too they're, fun, right? Yeah, they're super fun. Like I said, this is Colorado here. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this guy either needs some shades or he needs, to, he needs to not be scared to like let it go. Right? Yeah, let it go. How do you pronounce that name, Gus? Gun, Gun, Gunstanson, Gunstans. I don't. Well, I think there's an N, but the lady in the back is like, I've done this before many yeah, times. Yeah. Oh yeah. She guarantees you she karaoke's. Are they doing a different song? Oh no. <laughs> no. She's karaoke before dude. You know, since we're since we're doing this, I'm gonna I have to play my favorite one and it's one that it, it gets on, better? It's on my personal page, like my my uh personal Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, that's how much I liked it that I wanted to share it on my personal page. And it's probably the best version. Like I said, I have told you there's a lot of songs on here that I don't recognize. But this particular gentleman played the best one, especially at yeah, seventy-nine. Yeah, he did. He did. A, he did a heavy hitter. For in my eyes, and being that he's a, uh, being that he's a sheriff as well, that made it even better. So, is it mainly police? Like, so you because you define that this guy's a sheriff. It's mainly police officers doing it, or just law enforcement in general. Uh, it's just. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna go with law enforcement. Okay. This gentleman right here. Well, there's always been groups of people that never. Chris Lindy. As I like to say, Chris Lindy. Chance to sit down and talk face to face, they might realize they got a lot in common. Hell yeah, dude. The hat. Dude, I love Chris Lindy. Wow, me too. I this song speaks fucking volumes across like. Every culture. Yeah, he's got a cool yeah. name, Sheriff Lamb. Well, that's, that's a shop, fucking cowboy. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Love this song. So I'm, rodeo stories with this old cowboy friend of mine. I'm, 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 I'm going to skip forward a little bit. I'm glad he, 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 he's legit. He's, he's practiced. He's got good eye contact, dude. Like, got the look? Yeah, he's got the look down, dog. Stetson on them? Yeah. And, and you can tell, like, when they do this, they're letting down that guard, like that, yeah, that, that, that air, like a... Anybody, uh, anybody's vulnerable when you do that, because yeah. you're, you're performing for others, you know? You know? And like I said, that's what they need, dude, in my book. Single brother. <laughs> I love this song. Yeah, that's what's good. This is what's been going on on social media. And I, guess I hadn't heard of this one. I hadn't seen it. Well, you know, I don't have it to be following, right? If it comes in the news thread, like whatever news stream I may be following, um, then 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 I get hip to it. But if it's not there, then it's kind of lost in the whole internet scape that I don't stay in. Right. You know? Yeah, and I was wondering if he had or not. Because no. like, I'm glad you turned me on to it, dude. Yeah. I was actually, I mean, you know, I don't prepare it, anything up for this yeah. podcast, but I actually, pre- I actually was like, I'm saving four videos just okay. like this, so I can okay. show Johnny this. You know, because it's not, I don't have anything ill to say about them, it's just the fact that... The they, power situation. Know, yeah, the power situation, you know. They, uh, over, they overdo it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you feel... The, and, and, and I don't think, and I don't see it as like, sometimes or whatever, I think it's pushed on them to have this... Um, complex, you know, this whole eliteness to themselves, right? That, oh, you know, like, we're civilians, they're, you know, right. law enforcement. Like, they break us down as to be different. And when they're just like us, dog, and, they, and I, I just wish that it would be portrayed more, and I think that does. So that's Well, that's look good. at me. I have aspirations of becoming a police force. I don't, I don't get any more than you than, I, than me, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, think, I think there's situations that there are some bad people doing it, absolutely, and, that, and that's what we hear about. Yeah, that, know. It mo- like most but I, but news. I know there's a big, I know there's a big percentage there. It ain't yeah. huge, but there's yeah. enough of a percentage where some things need to be... Uh, taken care of in that retrospect and this, and this was a good this was a good yeah, just like, level show. for right you know show that like you right. said the the uh vulnerability 
People, yeah, some, I'm know. sure there's a lot of people out there that are gonna be hating on it, but hey, they're having fun. Yeah. If you're yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if you're hating on somebody having fun, then, then you're, you're like just a, that you're just like them and hating on hate. You're you know a, what I mean? One uh, hate, hate, yeah, hate, like, hate, like a hate, grade hate, A hate. hater. Oh, for sure. And a grade yeah. A hater can eat a dick. Mm-hmm. Not that there's anything wrong. Haters with gonna that. hate. Yeah. yeah. You know what? When you when you you were just about to say, not that there's anything wrong <laughs> with that. Like, you know, all these things that we put down people like to do. You know, and we appreciate in some sense, like, oh, go suck a dick. But, like, <laughs> wouldn't you like to have your dick sucked? Like, I know. You know? I used to, it, well, it was a running joke. joke. It was a running joke with me and my girlfriend. It's exactly like you're saying. You know, okay. it's like, because uh, I would always be like, oh, that motherfucker. Fuck that guy. Say that guy can suck a dick, and I'd be like, "No, there's anything wrong with that." <laughs> there's anything wrong with that, baby. I might be asking you to do that later, yeah. so don't think. she'd be like, "Shut up." It was all in jokes. Yeah. You know? No, that's the truth. <laughs> it, it, it all in humor, you know. If you can find it to utilize the humor in the situation, then for the better, right? Yeah. For the better. Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I was—you said the word "utilize," and I'm going to show this clip uh, of this homie utilizing a skateboard. Hack? A life hack for a skateboard? Have you ever seen a robbery? Or Damn! Have you ever seen it? My mom. Hey, man. Sorry. You gotta watch out with the camera. Uh, you ever, you ever seen any kind of a robbery or see, like? Have you ever been around when somebody's gotten robbed or been in a store or um, anything like that? Uh, yes. I remember. I remember being in the Hastings. And they rousted us up. Cause, oh, yeah, me, you, and PJ. Yeah, me, you, PJ, and I don't know who Oh, else. yeah, because somebody was stealing Somebody something. was stealing. Like, they had jacked to the store, right? And right. we were a group of kids in there, so they rousted us up. Yeah. And lo and behold, like, we're pulling money out of our pockets, you know, like, we... And they're like, well, fucking... They didn't take it, and, well, who knows who did it, right? But they f- for sure tried to get us for it. Right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I... Not that I saw someone with gunpoint like being robbery, robbed. Huh? Yeah, I can't. I can't honestly think of that happening. Um, I've seen people get probably jacked. You know what I mean? Punched, knocked out, or whatever, and shit taken from them. I remember being in the uh, <clears throat> Diamond Shamrock up the road from where I was born, and uh, it was late. It was like ten o'clock, but it was a summer night, and it was me and Alvino and his sister Tina, and we went into the uh, Diamond Shamrock, and there was this drunk vato in there. Uh, did did not need another beer. Well, the cashier told him, "I'm not selling you that beer if you're already drunk." You know yeah. what I mean? And I've had, seen that happen. He had a big old 24 ounce uh, can. You know what I mean? He, he just wanted the, the one. tall boy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The he, tall he, boy. He wanted one of the above. A uh, turbo. Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it was, and that's how they said it. Uh, so yeah, he had it, and he the guy wasn't going to sell it to him, and then all of a sudden he just reared back and just from me to you, you know, just. Cracked him with the thing. The, the Holy cashier, shit! Yeah, the cashier dropped, you know, and the guy took off walking real fast. And then the cashier got up, and his face was all split open, you know. Uh, and that was the close. He didn't rob it. He didn't take the beer. But, he's, but he's, that was the closest I've ever been to wow. like a, an altercation or some type of a violence in a convenience store of some type. So I'm gonna play this video here of these two kids that happened to be in there when this place got robbed, and we're gonna watch it from the view of the security camera. So these kids are in there trying to ro- trying to steal shit. They're not trying to rob for money. They're just trying to get munchies, right? Yeah. So they're in there stealing chips and shit. You know, they're probably on their way home. They just want some shit to eat. He's look at this kid. Go get some, get some, get some yo-yos. Get some fucking. And so this kid, this guy comes in with the shotgun. Holy shit! Yeah. So they start freaking out. And they're like, "What are we gonna do?" Wow. And so they both have their skateboards. Whoa! Ha ha ha! Mom, on that dude. We're out of here, dog. Yeah. So they gave the the shotgun to the owner <laughs> and took off. Wow, those dudes, those those little fucking heathens are legit as could be. You know, that's uh one of the downfalls to how people view crime. They say, oh, crime, right? Like, and. Sure, those kids were stealing, but it was it, they were stealing some munchies, dude. It wasn't like that yeah, dude like with the gun. Two, three it's, bucks. It's, it's it's a fine line, right? Like everyone, I, and I don't have the words to define it, right? I'm no legal lawyer or nothing, right? But like, those dudes, those dudes did a, a badass stand up act. You know, who knows? 
I don't know, two bucks a bag of chips max, right? They were getting maybe 10 bags of chips. Let's say they had 30, 40 bucks. Maybe the guy was going to get the same out of the register, right? right. The same 30, 40 bucks. But the way in which the he took upon getting his money, right? Like, these guys were just trying to feed themselves. What, are you going to sell a bag of chips? No. <laughs> they were going to grind. This dude... Walk on their way home. You yeah, know, yeah. I don't know, man. I want to play one more clip of a robbery. I wasn't going to show this, but it made me think of this clip that I saw of these mother and daughter. They own a... They own a uh, a liquor store, and this is America's what happened one night. gun rights may point to our next story as a reason why. The incredible scene in Oklahoma caught on surveillance. A man armed with a shotgun confronting a mother and daughter inside of their store. Look at them talking the shit. Back down. Damn! Go. Daughter's like, let me get my gun. with the late details. He was armed and dangerous. Police say that's a thief strapped with a shotgun robbing this Tulsa, Oklahoma liquor store. It looks like he's about to get away with it. But watch, as the crook turns away, the mother-daughter duo grab guns of their own. Mother Tina Rang takes aim and fires multiple you rounds. see that? I saw mm -hmm. the shotgun. Robbery came around the corner. Him and just started to shoot. The alleged robber returns, shot in the leg and limping, but he won't give up. We were wrestling for oh, the shoot, gun. Oh, she's mama. Damn. Oh, she oh. shot. Empty the gun. Empty the gun. Empty the gun. That's all I could think of. Was just she's so lucky she didn't shoot mama. Yeah. yeah. Pistol whips oh, damn. Oh, she shot him again in the chest. Oh, I just shit. wanted him to get out of there. Luckily, he didn't have any bullets. He just kept coming back. Did she, was she, like she was smart enough to empty the gun before he got the gun. Blank range. Oh, Mother and daughter damn. fighting for their lives. Lucky he's still in there. Finally able to run out of the store to safety. Tina says her daughter won't be working there that anymore. That done. The suspect, he's in police custody in the hospital. Oh. Now police say he could be he connected to at least die. 10 other robberies in the area. He's in police custody. Tom? No, I am not done like he ain't getting away with nothing. You know. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos. I've seen better footage of that. The footage that I originally saw was so much better than that. Um, yeah, that's some stupid shit to do, man. Entirely. Just robbing shit? Um, yeah, it's... Fucking, I don't know, man. There's putting someone at gunpoint is a complete lack of, you know, fucking anything we stand for, like humanity, morality, ethics, all that. You know, it's like they say on that Terminator movie that I don't like. If you're gonna point the gun at somebody, you better be prepared. To yeah, pull the <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just uh, it's the foulest of human beings to to tease someone. At the end of their life, like you know, the, yeah, that's what the, essentially you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely, it's uh, yeah, that just someone's a piece of shit for doing that. Yeah, well, he learned his lesson. Those women were not backing down, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's a lot of people who, especially in this this time of of our country, is uh, pushing for gun rights. But there's a lot of people pushing for gun rights, yeah. and there's a lot of people who feel like it's necessity that we have our guns, that we have the right to bear arms, and. At situations like that, you may see a lot of school shootings and whatnot that kind of give the negative view on owning guns. But then you see situations like this where you, people get to to protect themselves in the rightful manner in which it's justified to pull a gun on somebody and fire back. Those, you know, that happens time and time again. We just yeah. don't see it every day. I guarantee you, if we looked up the uh, stats of of somebody protecting themselves with their own gun. In America, it's, it has to be a couple of a day, I would think. I would think so. I bet you there's, I mean, especially like you're saying, there's this growing uh, carrying movement that the people are different, you know, wanting to defend themselves. I, I, I don't doubt that there's. I, I personally 100% want to take a, a gun carrying class because I, I personally want to carry a gun all the yeah. time. Do I want to use it all the time? Fuck no, but I would, it'd be nice to know that I have that on me. Because I've, I've seen many of uh, cases where there's a lot of robberies in gentlemen. I mean, I, like I said, we could Google, we could YouTube right now. Uh, people stopping, like citizens stopping robbers in their tracks, and it's going to be so many people who are gun carrier, uh, respectable people who had just happened to be in the right place at the wrong time, you know? Uh, and I, I could be one of them, you know? I could be one of them, Chris says. <laughs> Holding it to gangster style, all, all, all tuggish, roguish. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's crazy. Another stupid thing, you know, she, robbing people is stupid. But check out this chick. She did this at a at a music festival. You're never gonna believe this. What the fuck? This girl put her head in a tailpipe and got stuck. What a fucking idiot. 
Well, you've seen all those. Yeah, I've seen some big ass fucking exhaust pipes. Well, she was drunk, and she I guess she thought I could put my head in there. And she sure as hell did. And it got stuck. So well, they had to how call, you get it in and not get it out? They had to call the fire department to come. She got arrested because she was a minor drinking. <laughs> what a numb school. Yeah. He didn't even charge her. Yeah, the guy was a good guy. He was like, you know, even though you. That's probably him, a hilarious story for him. Yeah, cause that that couldn't have been too cheap. No, those tips. Yeah. Hey, she's not bad looking too, so I'm sure that was part of it. Yeah, he's like, uh, here's my digits. Oh, look, an altercation between cops and protesters in Austin. Dang, today? I don't know. Let's see when this was. This is in Austin, Texas. A town. Damn, there's some buckles that look pretty legit out there. I don't know. I don't want to be messing around that crowd. Well, I'll stay cheapish. Yeah. What are they doing? It must be about this monument. Damn. Oh, this is wild, dude. Look at this idiot with the commie flag. What's that all about? I don't know, dude. I just fucked it. Oh, no, bro. What is going on? I don't know. They're, they're, bro. Horses are involved. This is a 20 minute long video. Dude, this is fucking crazy, too. Let's skip forward halfway through. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay, so things have settled down. Uh, so the protesters are yelling, fuck the police, which is not nice. No. I don't know why they got Russian for This guy's obviously the leader, dude, or some kind of a leader. I wish I knew what they were mad about. Don't you? Yeah, Pete, when, it, when people are angry, sometimes they don't even know, dude. Is there anything that you feel like you would want to protest about right now? Like, would you do you have are you do you have it in you to be like you know what I'm gonna? Go if I thought it was worth it, totally. There's plenty of shit that I would like. If I thought with those guys, um, uh, it was worth it, like they like you're gonna achieve anything. I fucking I'm all over. Have it. you ever partaked in a protest before? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I you know I. Uh, what the fuck do you mean? You should? Yes or no? No, well, I can't. I I never got down like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was legit. Yeah, that was legit. That was super legit. Uh, no, I can't say that I did anything like that. I'm personally okay. too lazy to want to go do that. Yeah. Like, I believe in shit, but I believe in it enough to go, like, sit in the heat. Especially in Texas right now. It's like 104 in, in our That area. could be what's causing a lot of it is the heat. You know. Dude, Austin's been being strange. I've been I I watch Spectrum News because I uh, Spectrum Cable is my news station. So they went from weird to strange. It's people were acting foolish now, and then maybe it is the heat. You tell you the summer of Sam when yeah. that dude was killing people it was the heat. They blamed it on the heat. Oh, you look they? at all those Spike Lee movies. It's always in the heat in New York. You know, people yeah. be acting crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, it, it Predator. Remember, he came down. It was in the hottest of summers. <laughs> I made a new Predator. I want to see that shit. Have you seen the... the no, uh yes, I, I, You know, I saw the thread on the news, but I didn't clip it. You know, I didn't like... Nothing. We're going to see if we can show a, a, a trailer of it and see if we don't get kicked off. Because uh, that was big shit for me. You know, I'm an action guy. I, I like Predator, I, dude. Yeah. Predator's so, one of my favorites. Um, All right, here it is. I'm in acquisitions. I'm in acquisitions. So and you're an accountant? And I you can things. Out of this guy. Oh, he rounds up aliens. Yeah. That's the dude from This Is Us, a big show. Oh, that's Olivia Munn. There's a lot of good actors in this. Mexico. Nobody wants any witnesses. When they 
to know if you and your men pose a threat. We're rangers. Hey, Baxley, if your mom's vagina were a video game, it'd be rated E for this everyone. guy. That's a good joke. Isn't posing a Sit around making hats out of rib cases. They conquered space. Ah, we got the gist of it. Yeah, I, totally. I, I, I love that franchise, and I'm gonna watch this one. For I sure. Like I watched all the other ones. I'm all over it. I'm. Before we saw the trailer, I was like, <laughs> I gotta see that already, right? Yeah, but seeing the trailer, I'm like, oh man, this is looking good. You know, they switched the first two Predators. They made him anti-friendly or whatever you want to call it, right? But the uh, once they made Alien versus Predator, yeah. he became like your best friend. Yeah. Are you mean like they made him the guy you can cheer for? Yeah, 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 totally. Know. Someone that we as humans fighting for us. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, he he had the same. You know, he had two arms, two right. legs. You know, so unlike the Alien, that motherfucker weird, <laughs> right? Yeah. So he was at least uh, somewhat human, humanoidish. Yeah. Even though he did the. It was cool. I, oh, yeah. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, me too. I, you know, every time they come out with a new one and even the aliens and all that, they amp it up. And how they managed to do that, I don't know, but they amp it up. And this looks like they did a whole nother level. Like now, homie's got the sick-ass mask with the glow eyes. And, right. Yeah. I like it. I like it. They're, they're making a new uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Here's a that one I did like, too. This is the trailer, oh, a trailer of the new... I don't movie. know how long ago... <laughs> this is a trailer for the new Ninja what Turtle movie. You ever seen a turtle, turtle climb a fence, dude? No. This bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. A turtle climbed the motherfucking fence. Oh. Dude, when you gotta go, you gotta this go. This turtle Ooh. is climbing a goddamn fence. Oh, God. What the heck? <laughs> Look at this. That's impressive, though. It is. It's like he knew what was going to happen. He's climbed a fence before. Did you see him just go okay? neck? That was, incre that was incredible. That is. And I, animals are badass, dude. We don't even know it. Oh, dude, speaking of, check out this clip that I saw today of animals. Um, it would be intense to be around this, to catch this. You know, there's a lot of drive... I guess you call them drive through safaris kind of thing. Mm -hmm. well, I've been on like a few generic ones here in Texas. This is one right here. But a cheetah is chasing. Oh. So watch this. All these uh, gazelle antelope running through, you know. And it's majestic. And then all of a sudden you see cheetah. <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, something's going on here. So watch this. Oh. Oh. Your truck just made life. Oh. Oh, I wonder if he jumped in. I wonder if he jumped in the, th the car or just... Either way, if he... If he jumped in, he's killing... He's if hurting he would have made it over there. the top, that kid hanging out would have been smashed. Yeah. Those things <laughs> fucking beat you up bad, dude. Cheetahs, man. What an amazing animal. Mm-hmm. They place. were... They were some of like when I was growing up, they were one of my favorite animals. You know, just oh, dude, we gotta watch this. A jaguar attacks a crocodile. Yes. Oh, and he wow. got it. Right over the head. He's eaten them before, dude. Look at how fat he is, dude. That's a beast. What a beautiful fucking mm -hmm. creature. Spotting its prey from the riverbank. This jaguar silently swims towards a caiman basket. I've been. I went, He's got balls to do that. How does he know there's not more crocodiles in there? I uh, I went on. I was on a ranch one time that they had one, a jaguar. I got to feed it fucking raw chicken and all that shit. I wonder if they okay. wouldn't like it cooked. Oh. I would have never guessed that he would have ate that. Maybe he carries it. He could have just went down. Clinical yeah. The cat sinks its teeth and claws into the back of the unsuspecting crocodilian. Whisking it away with a He got in the perfect spot. Yeah, he, like I, he's done this before, dude. It seems nowhere is safe while this beast is on the prowl. He's done this before for sure. Amazing. I'm betting he started with little ones and worked his oh, way dude, up. We gotta watch this one. 
This, I've, I've seen videos of this before. They're just waiting. Yeah. How many? Uh, I bet there's... Just as... Probably like 50 to 100 crocodiles. Snapped in the wild. For any of you viewers who are squeamish, you might want to turn away. Oh. Who's squeamish of this stuff? It's... It's nature, it, right? Yeah, it's nature. It's the it's the weird shit like people getting hurt. Getting Kenya. So this is a migration. Between June and October, the migrating animals of the Serengeti and Masai Mara begin the toughest part of their yearly migration. Big old fat crocodile. The dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Wait. During this time, over and they a can't tell. They think it's a rock or who knows what. Look at them. There's four right there. Migrates across the crocodile infested. This one's coming for dinner. Yeah, you can see, the, see the waves coming. Safari guide Dennis has been working. Oh, there's five. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. And captured this dramatic footage showing oh, Dennis zebras crossing the Mara River. After waiting the early morning they should be for around 30 minutes. See, I usually see them get the wild beasts, the wildebeest. Sorry. And it wasn't long. Those are the ones I see the vid like, videos of most. And began to attack. Despite being aware of the crocodiles, the panicked zebras continued their journey. As most of the zebras managed now, to see, cross they safely, should have been going that many sadly, there are always some that don't. It's not sad to the crocodiles. Yeah, some, everyone got to eat. Oh, one's down. Oh, oh that's a small man, one I didn't too. even see that one go down. I guess he was hiding behind this the other one. It was a, a smaller one. zebra who got caught. Juvenile zebra. Yeah. He's had. Who's who's got it? Got him in the leg. Right? Yeah, must have. A harrowing moment didn't take long as the crocodiles quickly moved in to bring it down. Uh, now they're taking it out to deep damn, water. Damn! Look at the size of those things. Oh my god. Dude, they're huge. I've had crocodile to eat too. Oh my oh, god! It just takes the whole head. They're gonna drown it. Oh my god! I feel for the zebra, man. Do you think the crocodiles ever wonder what it under the water meat might taste like seasoned bits of flesh into smaller bites? I mean, uh, <laughs> that's how bad wow. all humans are. It's like, oh, put some salt and pepper on that These steak. These crocodiles are one of the largest species in the world, reaching up to five meters in length. Ripping it up now? They what? can survive for long periods. Look how many? Look at this, a hippo. Oh, a hippo. Well, hippos are more violent than Yeah, you. way more violent. Up to half but I think they only eat grass, so... Dennis has witnessed many scenes they like this. They still fuck you up. Oh, yeah, if they think you're messing around, they they're messing around in their shit. Although these scenes can be hard to watch. And the death roll. It's nature. This juvenile made it. Look at all those ones that made it, dude. A smart zebra would have been like, Alright, guys, let's go. It's got one. It's got one. Call it. They're eating. Man, wilderness, man. That's some wild. That's the yeah. wild. Yeah. Something else. People, people don't see it every day, and they get shielded to it, and then a little thing like... It's just a little bit of instincts, right? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You know what else is instinctive? Uh, I saw this, and I really made me think about it. Uh, this, this is a course that teaches babies to swim. And it, That's how I was taught. A lot of people just think like it's harsh. Just like that. I mean, they, they, that dude just fucking chunked that kid. I mean, they, a lot of people think it's too harsh. But, you know me, dog. I always preach that Spartan mentality. And a lot of people in this world wouldn't well, make it the way I think life should be. This, so. this video changed my life, changed my mind because I thought, when I watched it, I was like, that is harsh. That kid, that guy just chunked him. Now they're just pushing him underwater. Yeah. But... These babies are learning how to float, so it gives the mothers or whoever else enough time to get them out. So, like, if my daughter fell in the pool, she would know to yeah, roll. Yeah, baby, he ain't got no yeah. pain and trouble. See, so, look, like I said, it, 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 it teaches them to roll on their stomach or roll to their back. So they And then that would give anybody enough time to pull out your child. Yeah. So, yeah, that is terrible, I mean, to see that. Because you think, oh, my poor baby's freaking out. But this needs to happen this in guy. order to save their life. I've seen it done too. Um, uh, yeah, that baby just fell in. Leo, Leo uh, taught Kiara when she was an infant. Um, I was taught as an infant, and so you pro, you're pro with this, huh? For sure. And Aaron's taught. Aaron's one of the one of the biggest things that goes wrong with people is they panic in the water. 
And I've been in some pretty fucking tight situations. I'd say. And what got me out was not panicking. You know. I think was the, the most ab- panic happens in in pool. Water oh, for related. sure. Like I said, I don't want to drown. That would be one of the worst ways to go down. Would be drowning, right? Sure. So panic is one of those easy things to let you, you know, let go over your head and take you take you through the whole nines where you're just like, and next thing you know, you're sucking your water down yourself, and that's what kills people. So that instinct already being taught and learned at that age where like I said I've been in some really bad spots maybe I don't know if they were entirely uh, you know kill time zones but I feel like if I'd have fucked up I could have easily been dead a sucker you know what I mean right. and unfortunately we know a homie that died of this yeah life. yeah and his in his situation I've, is one of the extremes for sure I you know R.I.P. Ponder of Yeah, R.I.P. fucking... We ain't forgot about your son. No way, dude. That dude, man, getting around with that guy was something else. That's how like, I used to, Yeah, yeah, that's that was I used to think about, like, um, uh, you know, when I describe our group growing up, people are like, they think, oh, yeah, oh, you're from Texas, and I was like, man, but one of my best homies was... Hawaiian? Was, yeah, Low Hawaiian. Ocean. Low Ocean. We had, yeah. you know, we the full gambit, so... Right. German? Yeah, yeah, the ocean. white guy. Yeah. So, like, that was our crew. We didn't just, like, run just brown with brown or, you right. know, like, we saw that. We knew people that ran in those type of circles, but... Absolutely. Ours was a real mixed group. Very well-rounded. Yeah. Uh, and we're very appreciative of that because we had a... Uh, we had a very tight, loyal group from all different walks of life. You know? Yeah, like... Very people, blessed. people, people. I know that they talk about well, exchanging stuff with. Oh, well, uh, my mom traded casserole recipes with such and such moms to get her casserole recipe. Nah, uh Me and Panya did. My mom made the my grandmother made tamales. His mom made egg rolls. We swapped dishes <laughs> like that. It right. was like well, we'll trade we'll trade uh, tamales for egg rolls and stuff. So that's what we would do. Right. That's how deep it got. Not, not like I said, just exchanging passe stuff for passe stuff. It was like one culture for another. Right. You know. So one more one more layer yeah. to to you know our development. I think that I think is lost. You know, people are like, oh yeah, let's take Tucker to go play with Tyler and his. Yeah, we're lucky for being in such a small town that we still had enough diversity to where we didn't feel hindered in growing up. Like, yeah. we live in a town of 12,000 people. We still had enough uh, interaction with other cultures to, to where we didn't feel handicapped Mm-mm. in growing, yeah. you know, mentally or emotionally or anything. We we got to, we still got to to take a little bit of Laotian with us. And we still got to take Malakaliki Maka with us with Bobby, yeah. you know what I mean? And All the little, and, all the little stuff there, Yeah. You know? So, and they got that from us with the Hispanic culture, you know, so it worked out perfectly, you know, in a small town, we got lucky, you know. Yeah, Cause we sure. didn't, And that's just, that's, in, that's definitely a praise to our parents to let us be open-minded enough and, to understand and, that. And, and it just, if, for me anyways, it just uh, grew into an interpretation of how the world should be, right? Like everyone has their own culture their own thing like we were like i said my grandmother made tamales his mom did the egg roll thing and, and the we, rice in sticky the, rice all the sticky rice was killer right? the sugar yeah like all the little knickknacks that came from their culture that i dug the shit out of that i know you know he came over and we making tamales or you know that's the go-to real burritos yeah real oh, burritos shit. that's the go-to because we actually did that shit like yeah, i remember yeah. when we were like homemade tortillas yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh so it just grew into where when I see things being enjoyed or interpreted or however it may be from other cultures that I am willing to understand their interpretation and enjoy what they enjoy. Maybe it's not my favorite, but hey, I, you know, like they dig it, I can dig it, and I go on to what I dig about my stuff and maybe try to find other things in the world that I dig from other people, right? Right. And... Uh, saying for myself that it, it was one of those growing that I, uh, people that lack that opportunity it sh- you know it shelves them in this whole world of just whatever it's a missing out yeah, yeah for sure you don't miss out. out when you go out with your friends to the bar but you definitely miss out with interacting with more people for sure yeah. you, you definitely lose out on a lot there because uh, you strike a chord mentally you strike a chord emotionally you strike a chord spiritually doing those type of things yeah. uh going out to the bar or not going to the fucking concert or 
whatever maybe yeah you, it sucks but i think definitely not interacting with more people outside of your own race or outside of your own understanding that's when you lose out yeah in growing yeah. Uh, anyway you got a uh, any hinders for this we got to round this bitch up we over mm-hmm. our mark keep that humanity going folks you know humanity y'all yeah. uh shout out to my little girls uh nita and Junebug. i love you girls see y'all soon uh, <laughs> oh we all friday 13th Jason Morton. <laughs>